This world of capturing moments through a lens, it portrays a constant adventure, a cacophony of rich, diverse, and electric experiences bundled into playlists and a self-aggrandizing Instagram feed. And while ostensibly real and authentic, these snippets of reality hide one significant truth that is glaringly obvious to those who meet me in person. I'm incredibly boring. When I went through high school, I was different to most kids. I got straight A's and graduated top of the school. I read books instead of socialising. I watched movies instead of partying. I went to bed early so I could wake up and go surfing and I couldn't give a shit about competitive sports. Today is a special morning, folks, because I grew my own mango! My brother would always say I was a 40-year-old trapped in a 16-year-old's body. When I finished school, I moved into an old beat-up van and travelled Australia surfing. I continued reading books and going to bed early, and I only spoke with a few people on my travels. I always had a weird relationship with these habits, my boring self. Whilst recognising they were what I wanted, there was always a part of me that felt a little disappointed in myself or embarrassed, maybe, for not wanting the other side of the coin. And sometimes when I did venture over to the other side, it always left me feeling an overwhelming sense of ineptitude at not thriving in such circumstances. Here I am over a decade later, and I'm still the same. But what's changed, I think, is that I've become, or rather, I'm becoming, a lot more comfortable with the idea of a slow, boring existence. And I think we might need to reevaluate whether boring might just be becoming the most interesting thing someone can be in 2023. Being a part of the YouTube universe, I often feel a certain pressure to portray my life as far more interesting than it is. The most successful YouTubers seem to always be moving, chasing new and exciting things and meeting new people. And I would be lying if at times I didn't feel attracted to that, intrigued by it. I don't find it easy to consciously turn my back on staying busy or trying to force myself to be more exciting. And being connected universally nowadays through social media and the internet puts the supposedly exciting lives of others front and centre each day. This is normally where the discomfort kicks in almost like a shame and FOMO thought cycle, questioning why I'd rather sit here alone with my book than dance with the vibrant social ecosystem back in the city. Whilst in Bali recently, I had so many messages from awesome humans offering to catch up, buy me a drink, or take me on a cool adventure somewhere. And it's scary at times to say no to these opportunities. But sometimes honoring what you feel is authentic for you 
sacrifices the chance to connect with other humans, even in a meaningful way. To get through these moments, I need to rest in trust. A universal trust that by living in alignment with who I am, then a community or a relationship can arise organically. Trying to force it to happen by sacrificing yourself, which is how it feels when I don't listen to that little voice that says, I just want some me time, is always going to drain me in some way. Surfing becomes an outlet for me to meet the world comfortably. In this setting, I can rest easy and I feel confident that I'm where I'm supposed to be. It's where I feel less friction between expectation and being authentic. It's where I can find human connection in a way that doesn't overwhelm or confuse me. I try not to judge too harshly those who find true enjoyment in a more normal and social life. Just because I'd rather sit around a fire and have a chat with some friends instead of going out for a party or a nightclub doesn't mean I'm more sophisticated or mature. But what's always interesting to me is that when I speak with people who engage in that sort of lifestyle, most seem to admit that it comes at such a high cost to them, physically, emotionally, and it seems that maybe more people are actually craving a slower, boring life than we actually think. The most important thing for me now is to be as unapologetically myself as I can. Attuning to a lifestyle that feels most authentic to me simply brings more joy and happiness to my own boring little existence. And in a world where I feel we're all being called more and more to hide our true selves behind the filters of an online presence, to seek shallow and fast instead of deep and slow, perhaps being boring is the most interesting way to live. Sure.